Alex here again. Time for the exciting conclusion of the PLA embrittlement experiments. Of course, if you didn't see part one, go ahead and check out that video. That'll give you a little background into this. So I set up an experiment a month ago and tested embrittlement under a, a couple different conditions. I'll get to all that to try to find out what factors affected it the most. Now, I wouldn't call this a scientific study. It's just a simple empirical experiment performed under daily use conditions. And I did get some interesting results. Now, as I said in that video, the reason I wanna to get to the bottom of this is because I don't want to have to do something if I don't have to do something. Elaborate filament dehumidifier in sealed environment thingy. I wanna know if that's necessary for regular PLA stuff. Now, we do know that when you absorb too much moisture into PLA, it doesn't print very well because those little moisture pockets, when they hit your hot end, turn into steam and you get a pop and sometimes that's accompanied by an uneven spot in the side of your print. You also get reduced layer adhesion and some other problems. And mind you that this is just talking about PLA. Other formulations of filament definitely have to be kept drier, particularly nylon, which as you know, if you've ever used nylon for various things, 3D printing or other, you know that it's somewhat porous and does absorb a lot of moisture, which I found out because I was using nylon coil forms not potting them and the dielectric constant of the material was changing depending on environmental conditions which was a real pain in the butt because it was a tuned circuit but anyway that all goes to say that investing in a sealed box that keeps humidity down for those filaments is probably a good idea but pla is more one of those like daily printer type things and it's a filament that you probably will be swapping out a bunch for like different colors and that type of stuff so if the variables are uh, moisture, light, and air. Moisture is the toughest to keep regulated, and it's a pain in the butt to swap those filaments in and out of the box. But if you're just trying to keep moving air over it, or if you're just trying to keep it dark, you could do that really easily. So let's get to it. So this is the eight different combinations that I tested. So there were basically two groups, the light group and the dark group, and then everything else was redundant between the two of them. I also had two control samples as well as a couple pieces that I just snipped off the reel, which was perfectly pliable, and then put under ultraviolet light overnight. So here's the pile of experiments all collected up. Obviously, the ones that were in the light are in the bags on the top, and the ones that were in the dark are in the boxes on the bottom. I also have a couple control samples right here, and then this snippet that I am just clipping off of the reel, so that's fresh. So here as a control, this is right off the reel. You can see it's very pliable, it doesn't snap, and it just kind of becomes gummy and chewy when I try to break it, and that's not coming apart. Now let's look at these two other samples. This one right here was snipped off the reel last night and then put under ultraviolet light for the night. Now, as you can see, that's just practically falling apart in my hands. And this was one of the control samples. It was just sitting on my bench right next to the printer the entire time. And as you can see, that's also extremely brittle and just falling apart in my hands as well and that establishes a pretty good baseline for the rest of the tests so here we have our lsd sample and then we have our thc sample and our kgb sample and our wait what are we talking about ah right filament oh but hold up there a second i hear you say back that thing up a bit because we have to answer a couple questions about these bags before we go further now, our bags are also made out of plastic, and like many plastics, they are also treated with various types of chemicals to either stabilize them or just to make sure they don't degrade in certain ways. So I had to make sure that these bags were not going to block all of the UV rays that were coming down, because usually they put something in these bags specifically against UV light. Well, it turns out these bags were treated with a UV stabilizer, not a UV blocker, which is a good thing, but they still didn't manage to let as much UV light through as it would have been, you know, just the samples that were sitting on the desk, which is unfortunate, but I really couldn't figure out another way to do it and still be able to test the other parameters. So I figured over a month we would get some kind of action and see what's going on, which is why I let the experiment run for so long. So anyhow, this is what our dark samples look like. They were sitting there in the box, they were subject to air, and they were subject to moisture in this case. And then in the other box, we have the same deal. These were sitting in the dark, but they were a little bit more closed off and uh, they were both dry. 
So first up is the light sealed dry sample. Now I don't expect these that weren't subject to all of the various conditions to degrade as much as the control samples that were just kind of sitting out in the open, but I'm hoping to see what the subtle differences between the different types were. And I'm just gonna go ahead and try to snap them. So as you can see, they're a little bit chewier than the stuff that was on the bench, but they are still cracking in various places. This is however still somewhat printable, at least for the most part. The second test is going to be the sample that was in the light, but it was also open to the air, but it was somewhat stabilized to, to be dry. So that one is a little bit chewier than the first sample. It's still not brittle like the control samples were. And I would consider this to be uh, printable for the most part, but there were a few areas that uh, snapped fairly easily in my hands. Next up in the light group is light sealed and wet. So I re-wet these little pieces of ShamWow every couple days just to make sure that as the moisture was either absorbed by the filament or managed to evaporate somehow through the bag, it was replenished. And as you can see, it fares just about as well as the other ones. And just like the other ones, it does have good spots and it does have some brittle spots like that. Next, we have the light air wet sample. Now, this was re-wet every day, but it was also exposed to air. And as you can see, it is fairly brittle in spots. Now let's move on to the samples that were in the dark. First up is dark, air exposed, and dry. Now, as you can see with these guys, they're a lot chewier than the previous four samples. I would consider these, however, to be perfectly printable. Next up in the dark group is the dark, sealed, and dry. Now this is pretty much how you get these from the factory, and it acted pretty much like they came from the factory. It was uh, just about as chewy as the previous sample, and it behaved pretty much just like new filament. Next up in the dark set is the sample that was exposed to air and to moisture, and I didn't see any degradation relative to the first two samples in the dark set. I could still get it to break if I twisted it a lot, but if anything, the moisture kind of made it a little bit chewier. Definitely printable. And then finally, we have dark sealed and wet, and I checked the sponge and it is actually still wet. Now, if moisture alone was gonna be the cause of embrittlement, this is its chance to shine and, well, it just didn't. As you can see, it's pretty gummy, just like the other ones. If anything, it's a little bit tougher. And there you have it. Bottom line then, what do we learn from all this? Well, what I really wanted to see was what the minimal precautions I had to take to keep PLA from getting brittle were. As we can expect, a lot of these things are more complicated than just a thing. And what I learned was, we're looking at four major variables here. Now there might be other ones, I'm sure there are, but these seem to be the ones that have the most effect. And of those four variables, which are light, air, heat, and moisture, we can break it down into two different major categories, fast and slow. And we're mostly concerned with the fast because we're saying, what is it that changes the properties of PLA specifically to make it brittle in the short term that makes our filament unprintable. Now we already know that for completely breaking down PLA, heat and moisture, that'll do the trick as long as you add some air into the mix. But we're not talking about long-term breakdown here, we're talking about short-term physical property changes. We also know that heat accelerates chemical reactions and that's going to affect any one of our variables. That's not as much a concern because we're talking about workshop conditions which are hopefully fairly pleasant. So the double whammy for us seemed to be the, the one-two punch of light plus air, with light seeming to be the biggest offender, but greatly accelerated in the presence of oxygen, and then greatly accelerated again in the presence of oxygen and heat. Now I'm kind of kicking myself on the heat thing because I didn't think of that ahead of time to run enough tests, so I only really have two or three data points. In hindsight, I also would have run an IR lamp along with the UV lamp experiments and then used um, definite like set time experiments and checked the brittleness along the way. But that's always something I could do in the future. But we did at least get a couple data points on that because I had the stuff that was subject to light with and without air and with and without moisture that was in the bag and stuff that was just out of the bag on just lying on the workbench right next to the stuff that was in the bag. And like I said, those bags were UV treated. They weren't UV proof, 
but the stuff in there that was blocked from a little bit of light and the stuff that wasn't in direct light definitely broke down slower than the stuff that was either sitting on the workbench or the stuff that was set under the UV lamp which just had concentrated light on it for some number of hours and elevated heat because those lamps do kick out a bit of heat, just not a whole lot. And that sample was also subject to airflow. And in hindsight, I also would have done a sealed sample there as well. So it seems like the major things we're talking about for short-term physical changes in our filament, as opposed to the long-term breakdown of the filament, fall into the categories of oxidation and photodegradation or photooxidation. And in the interim period between these two videos, I did a lot of research into the area just so that I would have information ready to go along with edge with with whatever of these results resulted. So if you want the super nerd details, go ahead and look that up. Just say polymer oxidation, polymer photooxidation, or polymer photodegradation. And there is a plethora of info that you can pick through. The subject is well trod, just not well trod specifically pertaining to polylactic acid filament. And it also seems that in terms of embrittlement, moisture didn't really have a lot to do with it. And that's further borne out by the experiment that one of my Patreon subscribers, Carson, did uh, that I replicated, which was just the throwing the water into, or throwing the water, throwing the filament into water for a couple days, then taking it out, letting it dry out, and trying to print it, because there was no increase in brittleness after the uh, filament dried out, and it printed just fine. Although it may be a contributing factor. And when I had two identical rolls sitting out, one on top of my workbench and one under my workbench in the dark, that were subject to the same humidity fluctuations. The one that was on top that was subject to ambient light definitely got brittle, so brittle I couldn't print it. And the stuff under the bench is good enough that I'm still printing with it right now. And you should probably keep your filament fairly dry anyway, so you don't get spits and pops and crackles and bad prints. At least that's what it looks like to me. And it seems logical, since I'm not a chemist, as my chemistry for engineer professor would attest. As has been mentioned by a couple people, this is also all contingent to what additives they put into the filament itself. And as you saw with the plastic bags, those additives can greatly change this, or at least slow it down, if not prevent it entirely. So I'm not sure if there are UV treatments that they could put into filaments to keep this from happening. That would be nice. But I don't know if they're toxic and I don't know how that affects the biodegradability and all that. Like I said, I'm not a chemist. But at least from what I've seen, it seems like something that will be worth looking into. If you want a TLDR conclusion, this is what I'm going to do with my filament. PLA that I'm not going to be using an entire spool at once, and I might be putting it on, changing colors, and that type of thing. I'm just going to move the mount for my spool from the side of my printer down underneath my bench, and then just toss a piece of cloth on top of it when I'm not using it, just to keep the dust and the air and the light and all that stuff off of it and then either make some kind of feeder tube for the part that's sticking up in the light and the moving air, or just pull out the brittle part, clip it off, and run some new filament up there. I mean, that's not that big a deal anyway. And then for spools that I've opened already but just haven't finished up, I'm just gonna put it back in the box and keep it in the dark. Because as we saw in the first video, I have samples that are a couple years old that have just been sitting in the box in the closet and they print just fine still. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments below. Like I said, this isn't a conclusive uh, scientific experiment, but it seems to have gotten reasonable results under normal printing circumstances in an average environment that led to some actionable conclusions. And that's good enough for me. So that's it for now. And until the next video, get out there and make something awesome.